All righty. Hello, everybody. One more time. Hello, everybody. Yay. I'm like known as the super optimistic American that's very loud and brash, so you have to interact with me. Otherwise, I'll fall asleep. I'm kind of jet lagged today. But uh, what I wanted to talk about today is going to be Lightroom Mobile. And of course, I have to speak at the Adobe booth. So it's very nice that my phone is reminding me that it's time to speak at the Adobe booth. So here I am. Uh, what I wanted to talk about, as I mentioned, is Lightroom Mobile. So uh, just to get a quick understanding, anybody out there already using Lightroom Mobile? Is there anybody, one, two, three people? Like, great. This is awesome. That's the way I can convince all of you to go out and download the Lightroom Mobile today. So Lightroom Mobile is a strategy that we have to help people get their photography onto their mobile devices so that they can go out and take pictures and work with their photography anywhere that they are. As we know with these wonderful devices, these phones that we have in our pockets, they're always with us. And this means that we have this opportunity to, anywhere we go, have everything that we want to do with our photography right in our pocket. We can bring it out whenever we have the um, mo motivation to get some creative energies going. And we wanted to enable you to see how you could edit your photos. Now, originally, Lightroom Mobile was designed around the idea that you can take your photos from your desktop, from Lightroom desktop, and bring it on the road with you. But one of the things we've seen happening recently is that people want to do more and more on their mobile devices directly. And this means that you want to actually be able to capture and create photography directly on your mobile device, and you may not ever even touch your desktop device itself. So one of the things we've done is, uh, you may have noticed, we were on the Apple keynote for the iPhone 7 announcing the ability to shoot in DNG, which is a raw format, which is a great way of being able to extend what you can do with your phones. You can also now capture and edit raw files on your phones, and you can synchronize everything throughout the entire ecosystem. But what I wanted to talk about today was how that all works together and how those things can make you a more creative and more capable photographer. So this is Lightroom Mobile. You can see it up on the screen. Uh, there's one over there. Uh, you can see it on my wonderfully cracked display device. This is my uh, strategy of getting an iPhone 7. See, I can't possibly use this anymore. I need a new device. Hopefully, my boss is watching, and he'll get me this new iPhone 7 since I can't possibly work on this phone any longer. But now that I've got my phone up here, Lightroom basically does a couple of things. One, it synchronizes throughout every different desktop and other kind of application part of the Adobe photography ecosystem. So any photos that I put into my Lightroom desktop that I synchronize will show up on my device, and any files that I put in here will then come back down to my laptop. It'll also show up inside of our web client. So this way, I can take my photos with me wherever I go. And it's a really, really great way of working with your photos. The other things you can do is you can sort through your images. If I go in here, I can take an image. And I can even go in, I can say whether or not I want to add a flag rating to the image. So if I want to say like it's a pick or a reject, or if I want to star rate it, I can go in very quickly and be able to say, oh, it's a five-star photo. And so if I'm sitting around and on the bus, on a train, in a cafe, and I want to organize my photos and say, which photos do I like, which photos do I not like, I can do it really, really easily uh, directly inside of Lightroom Mobile. But beyond that, I can actually go in and I can start editing the photos directly. Now, what's cool about this is um, this photo right here I shot with my iPhone. This is a DNG file. I shot this uh, when I was heading to Burning Man. So if anybody's been to Burning Man, hello. Uh, obviously, I have been. You can tell by the colors in my hair. Uh, but you know, this is a great sunrise event. And we were, wanted to be able to capture those images. Um, inside of here, I've got the entire ability to edit my photos. So every tool that you've used inside of Lightroom Desktop, for the most part, is available in the palm of your hand. It uses the exact same editing technology, the exact same quality, the exact same uh, functionality. So if I want to go in and I want to choose different white balances, I can select different white balances. And since this is a raw file, this is a DNG or a digital negative, I can choose any one of these different white balance settings or even go in and control the white balance directly. And I have full access to the entire raw data. And I'm doing it in my hand. And that's what's really, really cool. I'm not compromising. I'm not using anything less than the technology that's in the same functionality as Adobe Camera Raw, as well as inside of Lightroom Desktop. So it's the exact same quality, the same mathematics, as they say. So it gives me full control to dial it in. I can go in and select exactly the right kind of exposure values, contrast. And what's really great about this is any one of those settings that I've just made here has automatically been synchronized to my desktop, 
to my Lightroom web, to my iPad, to my Android devices. Every device that I have as part of the Adobe ecosystem are all synchronized together. So I can change any of these e changes that I've made here later on. Because, of course, I always get the question is like, well, why do you edit on this small device that you haven't color managed? And for me, the answer is always, it gives me a chance to start off. Maybe I have an idea. I want to see what it would look like. But when I get home, if it's a really, really important color critical application, I can use my really expensive monitor to fine tune everything. But Honestly, the truth is that the people that are looking at my photos aren't looking on color managed displays either, and they're just looking at it on Instagram or Snapchat, so they don't care. But that's just my uh, photography fans, which is mostly my mom, but that's okay. She thinks my photos are fantastic, and I think that she's great too. So one of the cool things, of course, as I mentioned, is not only do you have the ability to work with these uh, files that you shot here, but you can also attach your files from your camera. So I've gotten uh, some files that I shot. For example, these files were shot with my Leica Q. So I have a Leica Q that I travel with. I was able to transfer the files over to my phone using a camera connection kit. And I was able to edit them right away. This is one of the things, there's another photographer who will be doing some speaking at the booth. His name is Elia Licardi. He and I were traveling through Greece together. And he was shooting on his Fuji. I was shooting on my Leica. And we were able to just right there at a cafe in Greece or even on the side of a mountain, transfer our files over, start editing them, and sharing them directly with our friends back home without ever going back to our computer, without having to wait. And that's something that's really, really exciting. The, the time that we're living in right now means instant gratification in terms of our creative expression. And that's really, really fun that we don't have to wait and we can get the full quality and full control that we have in our images. As I mentioned, we've got inside of Lightroom Mobile all those types of tools that you're used to using. So if I go in and I hit edit, we've got the basic kind of edits and on the bottom, you know, your contrast, highlight recovery, shadow recovery, et cetera, et cetera. But you can also click over the side, and you have access to your tone curve. So if I want to go in here and, and just modify the tone curve directly, I can either do it with a uh, direct point curve, so I can modify everything, or I can use the, uh, the more basic parametric curve adjustment, which is, uh, for those of you familiar with Lightroom Desktop, exists inside of Lightroom Desktop as well. You can even go in and do that really super fun dehaze function. So if you want to remove any of the haze or fog that exists in the image, I can do that directly inside of Lightroom Mobile. So even the most complicated or advanced editing tools are still available right here on your phone, whether it's an iPhone or an Android device. Both of them work. And it's really, really cool to be able to see that level of control directly in your hands. One thing that's really neat, when we were developing the raw technology, we played with some really, really large files, some files that are 45, 46 megapixel, and we were doing it on an old iPhone 5C. So basically, we were able to work in real time with an iPhone 5C working with a 50 megapixel file, basically. It kind of felt like the future was here, and that was really neat, because we are in the future zone. I don't know if you noticed that when we walked in to this hall. It's the future zone, so we are like proving the future is here. I'm trying to see how many corny things I can say in one statement. It's, it's pretty good, I think. Moving right along, um, you can see, of course, we also have the ability. Here's an NEF file, so we can work directly with an NEF file. I copy this file directly over to my device using the camera connection kit. I had it on an SD card that I plugged into my device and copied the NEF file over. And I can now do all the edits on this NEF file. So even if you're using a Canon or any file that the Adobe Camera Raw system works with, you can edit it directly on your device here. Some of the other things that we've introduced recently, though, are the ability to do some kind of local adjustments. So if you haven't used Lightroom Mobile in a while, you may not have seen that we released some updates recently that gives you the ability to add gradients into the image. So if you look over here, I've got this uh, ability to add a local adjustment. I can tap on this local adjustment, and I can then take the exposure. And you can see I can apply it only to the bottom of the image. So this way, I have the ability to go in and be able to make selective adjustments to any part. I got some friends over there laughing that I haven't turned my uh, airplane mode on. So I'm going to keep on getting notifications throughout the presentation. It's, it's one of the things, the first preso of the day, you have to have some technical difficulties. At least the app hasn't crashed yet, OK? So hold your laughter for later. Then you'll have something really to laugh at when the app crashes, because it's Murphy's Law, right? Always happens. So we'll go in here, and you can see that I can then go in, and I can even like adjust the temperature of the foreground. I can add additional gradients onto the image. So I can go in here, and I can say, let, let's make the, uh, 
bring the highlights up or down, and then maybe even make it more saturated in the top. And then even do uh, other kinds of adjustments. We've got like a radial adjustment. So I can go in here and then switch that radial adjustment around. So now I can, I'm uh, affecting the, uh, the outside of the image. So you can make like a little sh shade inside of there. Or I could do the inside and bring the brightness of the inside up. So there's a lot of control that you could have. Again, the point is, I want to be able to work with my images anywhere that I am, be able to enhance my photos, and be able to then have that changes appear on my desktop so that I save time, I save energy, and I'm able to get like, a lot of really great results uh, out of the images. So one of the things that I find that's really cool about this is I can go through, I can edit all my photos, and I can even then share these things directly from inside of the app. Of course, we have this ability to uh, share this whole collection. What will happen is, if I want to, I can share this and create a collection online. And then it will create a link that I can email to my friends and family, and it will use the uh, Lightroom on the web to share these things. To show you what that looks like, I've got Lightroom on the web open over here. So this is Lightroom web that I have. You can see I've got a few tabs open in my uh, browser, just one or two. Uh, I had somebody making fun of me. I don't know, isn't this the way everybody's browser looks these days? Like lots and tabs? Or am I just weird this way? I, I don't know. Anyway, what you can see is I can see all of these different images that I've been editing directly on my phone are here also on the web page. So if I want to share these files with anybody, I can very easily just go in here and hit share. And I've got a little URL that will pop up over here that I can then share to Facebook or to Twitter or to Google+. I can control whether or not people can download the files. I can control which files people will be able to see, if they can see only the flagged photos or the unflagged photos. I can even allow them to see a slideshow and control what that slideshow looks like, uh, which is really great. So if I want to, I can just hit that button. And then I send these photos over to my clients, uh, or AKA my mom. And she can look at all of my photos that I have. Uh, of course, this internet speed is a little bit slow at the trade show booth, so it's not working exactly. But uh, there you go, see? Now you got something to laugh at. All right, I love it, that's good. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's a really, really neat way of being able to integrate all of these things together. And the ultimate result is that you can be able to have your photography wherever you are. And now I don't have to worry about bringing my laptop with me if I wanna just edit some photos. They're already on my phone or they're already on my iPad. And this is some of the power that we're seeing inside of the uh, photography experience. Um, one thing I did want to show you, though, uh, was this capture experience. So we, um, you can see everybody, now you can look at each other. You're all, is it, it's not updating. That's because I need to actually open up QuickTime. There we go. So you can see each other. This is inside of the Adobe Lightroom app. Uh, this is the camera inside of there. You see at the top, it says DNG. So uh, you can switch between the JPEG or the DNG format. For those of you not familiar with the DNG format, this is a format that Adobe created as an open file format for the ability to create a negative format for raw files that will be easy to open and that anybody can adopt. There's a number of camera manufacturers out there today that are using the DNG format. But most importantly, recently, we've had uh, the adoption of both Android as well as the Apple operating system using DNG as their raw file format. And what this allows us to do is allows us to capture a photo like we can do as such. Everybody wave over here. Wave, yay, take a picture. And then I can open up that photo that I just shot, and I'll be able to actually edit and change any of the values that were inside of that photo even after I took them. So I can go in, I can edit, and I can change the white balance to get the white balance to look better. See, you're all smiling. Some people didn't wave, though. And that way we can like, change these things. We can even go in and we see like, some of the highlights in the background are overexposed. So I can go into the highlights and I can pull those highlights down. So this gives us the complete and control and access to all the data that's inside of the file that was captured by this phone. So that way we have a lot more capability, a lot more control, and a lot more exposure latitude than what you would get inside of a JPEG. One thing I forgot to ask is how much wrap-up time do I need to give you? I got four minutes left, but do you need the whole time? Cool. That's awesome. I love it. I can just keep on ja yapping and yapping and yapping until the end of the minute. But the cool thing, again, is like I can capture all those raw files in my phone. 
And the idea that we wanted to make sure that people would start thinking about is, for a long time, people would consider these mobile devices as something you would only use for snapshots, for not serious photography. And I think that the interesting thing about that is that when you're talking about your phone that's in your pocket, it's always there. And who knows if you always have your digital camera with you. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't, but you almost always have this. I remember seeing a study, it was like a 10 years ago, that people were less likely to forget their phone than they were their keys or their wallet. So that was 10 years ago. Just imagine what that percentage is today. So that means you always have this. And now that the uh, iPhone 7 and the Samsung uh, S7 are waterproof, you don't even have to give it up when you go to the shower. You can keep it in the shower with you. So you never have to be without your phone. So that means you can always, always go out there and take pictures whenever you have an opportunity to and get that really, really good quality. Um, we see that uh, we released to, well, we didn't release it yet. We, we submitted the uh, iPhone 7 update to Apple recently, and pretty soon we'll be able to release an update so that you can have access to the iPhone 7's dual cameras, so you'll be able to zoom in using the telephoto lens, and that means you'll have even better control, an even better camera that's always with you. So this is a great time to be in as a photographer uh, in the mobile world, that you can be able to have raw files with high quality output right in your pocket. And we're working on always lots and lots of new and exciting technologies that will be able to integrate directly into your phones using some of these new functionality that only are available from Adobe. I think that was the email saying that the app was just uh, approved. So that's a good story. See, sometimes it's OK to have the wireless on. You learn lots of new stuff. Um, but yeah, so I think it's, it's a really, really exciting time to be in. Uh, I went out this morning and I shot a lot of photos of the, the dome. Um, I hadn't had a chance to edit them yet, but I can't wait to edit, edit them. And so maybe at the next presentation, I'll be able to use those as some of those de demo photos. Because it was a beautiful sunrise. I don't know if anybody went out there today for sunrise. I recommend it very heavily. Um, and I took a lot of photos with this, plus I've got like 18 phones in my, my backpack. So I was like that guy just taking so many different pictures with my camera. But anyway, point being, there's a lot of opportunities. I'm looking forward to uh, being able to share more technology with you guys. He's about ready to use the time to wrap it up. No, 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 no. I just thought, you know, it's, it's great, uh, the, these mobile workflows. And I think the key takeaway is that it's non-destructive. That's right. Right? And that's, that's, I think that's what people need to understand is that whatever you do on the phone transfers over to your desktop computer. And I think that's a real magic. Right. And DNG, that's a game changer. Exactly. This is another example of a shot taken uh, on a, an iPhone 7 in DNG. Uh, this was taken in uh, the Monument Valley in the United States. It's one of our beautiful national parks. And it's really, really crazy to think that this was shot on an iPhone in DNG with those raw settings. And as you mentioned, non-destructively, you'll at any point be able to change or modify them. Let's say that today you really like high contrast, but tomorrow you really, really like the low contrast effect. All I need to do is go into the editing, and then I can just change it. And I never have to worry about the fact that I've made these adjustments. So I can go in really quickly and make that kind of Instagram looking effect that, that people really like with the, the low contrast. And if I don't like it tomorrow, just change it out again. It's really, really neat, really easy. And uh, as I mentioned, something that makes me really excited to be part of the Adobe team. Great so stuff. So three seconds to go. Thank I'm you, done. Josh.